Hey, everybody. So nice to see you. Look at that. We even got a little camera push tonight. A little camera push tonight. Welcome to A Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Well, let's just get straight to the breaking news. There was a debate two days ago. It's been 48 hours, and I've almost rinsed all the blood out of my ears. Tuesday's debate was a colossal waste of time that diminished everyone unfortunate enough to have watched it. Just ask moderator and man demonstrating how much control he had over the debate, Chris Wallace. Yesterday, Wallace described the experience as a terrible missed opportunity. Chris, it's kind of a tame way to describe an unmitigated disaster. I'd love to see you cover the Hindenburg. And the frame is crashing to the ground, not quite to the mooring mast. Oh, the missed opportunity! <laughs> Even Trump's inner circle was shaken by the president's just awful performance. As CNN's Dana Bash reports. I will tell you, one person who's familiar with his debate prep, Anderson, said they prepared him to be aggressive, but not to be Jason from Friday the 13th. Okay, that's not fair. They might both be giant lumbering maniacs who have a lot of blood on their hands, but at least Jason wears a mask. And the reactions in the Republican Party at large aren't really any better. GOP senators have described the debate as awful and an embarrassment. And apparently, Trump's performance stokes fears among Republicans about November. Oh, now they're worried. I don't know, you know, when he ignored a pandemic and paid no taxes and called dead soldiers suckers and losers and asked Ukraine to interfere in our elections and was credibly accused of multiple sexual assaults. I thought, that's my guy. But then he interrupted Chris Wallace, and I'm starting to think we backed the wrong horse. Also, did you hear what he did to that horse? Tuesday night was so bad that yesterday, the Commission on Presidential Debates announced it will be making changes to the format of the two remaining debates. Oh, can I suggest a small tweak to the format where we never have them again? But instead, no, the commission suggests cutting off the microphones of President Trump and Joe Biden if they break the rules. Okay, but if you do, Trump's just gonna use semaphore. And come on, why are you pretending these changes are aimed at both candidates? Okay, I'm gonna cut the mic if either of you goes off on a deranged tangent about shower pressure or how hot you find your daughter Ivanka. Either of you. Biden hoped that something would change, but he wasn't optimistic. I hope that uh, this next debate is gonna be in front of uh, uh, real live people. It's gonna be a town hall. And I just hope we're able to, I'm looking forward to it, and I hope we're able to get a chance to actually answer the questions that are asked by the persons in the room. But God only knows what he'll do. Hmm. Is that true, God? Do you know what Trump's going to do? Hell if I know, Stephen. I've had your country on mute for the last year. Is it still infrastructure week? Oh, got to go. That's my sourdough. God, everybody. But... Donald Trump's debate performance polled really well with one demo, narcissists age 74 to 74 who are him. Because here's what he said last night in Minnesota. I really enjoyed last night's debate with Sleepy Joe. The verdict is in and they say that we, we, all of us won big last night. Yes, we, we, we up on that debate stage, all of us were up there disgracing our democracy. And if we don't win in November, we, we are all going to jail because we cheated on our taxes. Remember, there is no I in Eric is the fall guy. Despite Trump's claims, polls show that six in 10 Americans say that Biden won the debate. The other four said the winner was a sleeve of Oreos dunked in Ativan. Now you can see why Trump's uh, nervous. Because right now, the New York Times poll of polls has Biden up by eight points. No surprise, Tuesday he gave voice to the message all Americans have been longing to hear. Will you Who shut up, man? Listen? Who Refreshing. So today, his campaign released this ad. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut your face! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Hell! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut the up, Donnie. I'm Joe Biden. And I approve this message. 
Of course, what really matters is the swing states. And right now, Biden leads in Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Nevada, New Hampshire, Arizona, Ohio, North Carolina, and Iowa. From the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters, this land is sick of DJT. Yeah, I took guitar for a month. <laughs> Evidently, Trump actually reads the polls, and that's what made him lose what was left of his mind at the debate. Maggie Haberman tweeted, people close to him are blunt that the president knows he's losing and is scared of it. So he did what he does when afraid or anxious and tried to impose his will on the night. Yes, Trump just reacted like a cornered animal. Good question, Chris, but before I answer that, I'm going to express my musk sack all over this podium. It's a gland. Wanna guess where the gland is? I'll need a mirror. Plus, I never said anal. I never said anal. <laughs> Plus, this week, Biden got another huge endorsement. Miracle on the Hudson Pilot and AARP magazine Sexiest Man Still Alive, Captain Sully Sullenberger. On Tuesday, Sully landed this ad right on Trump's face. Leadership is not just about sitting in the pilot's seat. It's about knowing what you're doing and taking responsibility for it. It's in that highest calling of leadership that Donald Trump has failed us so miserably. Nearly a quarter million Americans won't have a voice. Casualties of his lethal lies and incompetence. All we have to do is vote him out. Man, Sully brought it. That's going to get Biden the suburban dad vote right there. That's as good as getting endorsed by self-locking grill tongs. Well, the brats return the brats. I'm not saying Trump's goose is cooked, but it's definitely sucked into the starboard engine. Now, with things looking this bad, Trump stopped running against Biden and has turned his attention to his true opponent, democracy. We're not going to lose this, except if they cheat. I've been telling you, this whole ballot scam is going to cause a lot of problems for our country. They're going to try and steal the election. We have a big problem, and you see it every day. You see it happening every day with ballots. When the ballots and when the system is rigged, which it is, obviously it is, and the only one that knows that better than me are the Democrats. And they go into closed rooms and they must laugh like hell. <laughs> I'm sure they're all laughing. Hey, that reminds me of a joke. Why did the chicken cross the road? To escape to Canada, because Bill Barr is turning dissidents into McNuggets. Now, there's no proof that wide-scale election fraud ever happens. It's so rare that even Trump's voter fraud commission couldn't find evidence, but that hasn't stopped Trump from already filing lawsuits in North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and elsewhere to restrict voting by mail. It's all part of his public service campaign, the vote. During the debate, Trump urged his followers to intimidate other voters by being a so-called poll watcher and now Don Jr. saying, I'm helping too, Dad. The radical left are laying the groundwork to steal this election from my father, President Donald Trump. We cannot let that happen. We need every able-bodied man, woman, to join Army for Trump's election security operation. Yes, every able-bodied man and woman, which does not include Donald Trump Jr. because he is clearly hammered. The radical left is trying to steal the election, but I'm not going to let him because we will fight the radical left like I fought the store guy when he wouldn't let me put my mouth on the slushy machine. And I don't know how those white claws got down my pants, officer. Babe, come here. I want you guys to meet Screamy Kimmy. Say the best is yet to come thing. Say it. Hello. But there are some heroes out there fighting to make sure all Americans' voices are heard. For instance, with just a month until the election, Snapchat says it's helped over one million people register to vote. But the registration only lasts 24 hours, so be sure to take a screenshot. Of course, if you register through Snapchat, you need two forms of ID, one where you're a dog and one where you're puking rainbows. There's a new Get Out the Vote drive called Get Your Booty to the Poll organized by exotic dancers. How could you, Cinnamon, Cheyenne, Candy with an eye, 
et tu, boute? The dancers explain the importance of voting in this online video. Want trades and coding taught in our schools? Then vote for the school boards that will prepare us for the job market. Want to end cash bail? Well, then vote for the sheriffs and county officials that feel the same way you do. Don't let other people decide who's going to run your community. Get your booty to the poll. Get your booty to the poll. Get your booty to the poll. That, my friends, is democracy at twerk. The PSA ends with this call to action. For information on how and where to vote, as well as resources to find out who's running where you live, go to getyourbootytothepoll.com. We had to blur so much of the booty that you can't even read the URL. There's got to be, there's got to be a line here. I understand this is CBS and we cannot show everything that God gave her. But a URL, no? Nope. You know what? I'm not surprised the dancers did this. I'm only surprised that the website Get Your Booty to the Poll was somehow not taken already. Well, I say good for you, ladies. Thank you. I'll also say this. Seems like they're trying to horn in on my turf. Of course, that's the Late Show's website, Better Know a Ballot, which has voter information for all 50 states and the District of Columbia. Join the millions who have already checked out our helpful videos. But here's the thing. Now that I've seen Get Your Booty to the Poll, I realize that Better Know a Ballot needs more sex appeal. Now, I'm not an exotic dancer. I'm just a middle-aged white guy. So I don't think that I'm actually going to. Take your buttocks out and vote. You can take your power boat. If it's chilly, wear a coat. Uh, uh. Pull the lever, take what the line. Pull the lever, shake that rump. You can vote. You get the idea. You get the idea. We got a great show for you tonight. Ethan Hawke is here. But when we come back, I might have to apologize for what I just did. And meanwhile.